good afternoon students in the previous class we have discussed the different methods to find out the natural frequency of a system the methods discussed were one was the energy method one was the newton's method and another one was a rayleigh's method so that is for linear motion we have discussed then for torsional vibrations then for we have discussed one more equation or one method to find out the natural frequency of a system so in all the three cases that is a newton's method energy method and a rayleigh's method we found out that the natural frequency of system is given by omega n is equal to under root of k by m and also we have discussed the torsional vibrations also where omega n is given by kt by i or you can see it as q by i so based on those methods in today's class let us solve some numericals uh, based on one important thing based on this method n number of problems can be solved based on this method n number of problems can be solved so i am going to solve 6 to 8 problems on this so which are different and if you have any doubts in other problems you can call us and you can clarify your doubts because it is difficult to solve n number of problems on this because if you observe the textbooks so they are they have given almost around 70 to 80 problems so it is not possible to solve such huge quantity of problems so i am going to solve six to eight problems which are of different type only thing is that you should understand what is given in the problem statement and how to solve so if you understand the concept then nothing is there all the problems which we are going to solve are based on the concepts so try to understand the concept so that we can solve it very easily so the first question i am going to solve for today's class take down the question determine the natural frequency of the mass m determine the natural frequency of mass m placed at placed at placed at one end of a cantilever beam placed at one end of a cantilever beam placed at one end of a cantilever beam of negligible mass of negligible mass of negligible mass of negligible mass as shown in the figure 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 so take down the figure so here they have placed a mass and here the deflection is shown <coughs> this distance is x and this length is l the length is l and deflection is shown and mass is placed at free end and one end is fixed the question is determine the natural frequency of the mass m placed at one end of a cantilever beam so first find out what is its deflection so you can find out its deflection so you have studied in case of strength of materials so you can find out its deflection and its deflection is given by w l cube divided by 3 e i w l cube is equal to sorry deflection is equal to w l cube divided by 3 e i so now what is the stiffness stiffness is equal to load divided by deflection load divided by deflection 
so you know what is the load and you know what is the deflection so find out stiffness and it is k is equal to 3 ei divided by l cube 3 ei divided by l cube where 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 ei is equal to where ei is equal to flexural rigidity where ei is equal to flexural rigidity where ei is equal to flexural rigidity of what of beam flexural rigidity of beam so what is the meaning of flexural rigidity what is e and what is i already have learned in strength of materials so i am not going to discuss in detail so i am just going to tell what is ei it is nothing but flexural rigidity of the beam so for general equation of motion for undamped free vibration is given by general the general equation of motion the general equation of motion the general equation of motion for undamped free vibration for undamped free vibration or undamped free vibration for undamped free vibration is given by mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 where we have the value of k so substitute the value of k in this equation so we get mx double dot plus k is 3 ei divided by l cube into x is equal to 0 so mx double dot plus 3 ei divided by l cube into x is equal to 0 so find out what is the value of natural frequency so compare this with the standard equation that is x double dot plus omega n square into x is equal to 0 so you are going to get the value of omega n and the value of omega n is given by under root of t e i divided by l cube into m radian per second the value of omega n is given by omega n is equal to 3 e i divided by l cube into m radian per second so this completes the first problem so let us go for the second one let us go for the second one let us go for the second one second question is find the natural frequency of the system shown in the figure find the natural frequency of the system shown in the figure find the natural frequency of the system shown in the figure find the natural frequency of the system shown in the figure find the natural frequency of the system shown in the figure so the figure is as follows in the center there is a mass m the total length is l the total length is l this is placed at a distance of l by 2 the mass is placed at the center and both the ends are fixed the total length is assumed to be l and the mass is placed at a distance of l by 2 now how to find out its natural frequency question is what is the natural frequency for this system so what is the difference between previous problem and this problem in the previous problem this end was fixed this end was free where the mass is placed now both the ends are fixed mass is placed at the center length is going to remain same total length is l but mass is placed at a distance of 
L by 2 from any of the end. So, how to find out the stiffness, sorry, or natural frequency? So, to get the natural frequency, we should have the value of k because the equation for omega n is given by omega n is equal to under root of k by m radian per second, right? So, that is our equation for omega n. So, to get the value of omega n, we should have the value of k first so that we can find out the value of omega n. So, how to find out the value of k? So, stiffness is given by what equation? Stiffness k is equal to load by deflection, load by deflection. So, how to find out the deflection? The question is, the next question is deflection. So, how to find out the deflection? The deflection for a, the deflection at the center of a bar which is fixed at both the ends with a load F at the center is given by deflection is equal to, deflection is equal to FL cube divided by 192 EI. When the mass is placed at the center, <clears throat> then the deflection at the center of a bar which is fixed at both the ends and subjected to a load F at the center is given by FL cube by 192 EI. So, therefore, stiffness, what is the stiffness? 192 by 192 EI by L cube is going to give us the value of 192 EI divided by L cube is going to give us the value of stiffness. Then use the general equation of undamped free vibration. The general equation the general equation for undamped free vibration general equation for undamped free vibration is given by mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0. So, we have the value for k. So, substitute it that is mx double dot plus 192 ei divided by L cube into x is equal to 0. Now, compare this one with x double dot plus omega n square into x is equal to 0, so that we can find out the value of omega n and the value of omega n is given by the equation under root of k by m. So, find out what is the value of omega n. So, we know what is the value for k that is 192 ei divided by L cube. So, what is the final value for omega n? So, 192 EI divided by L cube into M radian per second. So, this is the final value for natural frequency for the given problem statement. So, these are very simple problems. Let us go on in detail and discuss a little bit difficult problems one by one. So, let us go for the third problem. The problem statement for third problem is determine the natural frequency of simple pendulum. Determine the natural frequency of a simple pendulum the question is going to remain same for all the problems that is determine the natural frequency depending upon if they are given figure then they write the question as determine the natural frequency for the given 
figure or determine the natural frequency for the given system and in this case we need to find out the natural frequency of a simple pendulum so first consider a simple pendulum consider solution consider a simple pendulum consider a simple pendulum so first what i am going to do i am going to draw a simple pendulum i am going to draw a simple pendulum so this is the simple pendulum in uh, its original condition before giving any excitation to this uh, simple pendulum so it is shown here so for this simple pendulum if i give the excitation if i give the excitation then what will happen for this simple pendulum if i give an excitation to this or if i push the simple pendulum then what will happen it will come to this position this is mass m and i will call this length as l then this length is l so if i push or if i give an excitation to this simple pendulum what it will do it will start oscillating about a fixed point which one that one we have already discussed right so this length will also be l so initially this is our simple pendulum in rest condition so if i give an excitation to this mass then it will start oscillating through an angle theta so it will go to this position L is the length of the rod. I is the I will call this point as O. I is the moment of inertia. I is the moment of inertia about point O. I is the moment of inertia about point O, and this I is given by I is equal to m into L square. I is given by the equation. m into l square so for a system to be in equilibrium we know that if the system to be in equilibrium or if you want the system to be in equilibrium then what is the equation accelerating torque accelerating torque is equal to the restoring torque accelerating torque is equal to restoring torque so what is the accelerating torque we are going to give the accelerating torque is i into theta double dot i is i into theta double dot so that is what the acceleration i am going to give then what will be the restoring torque the restoring torque we need to find out i am going to resolve this into two components one is mg cos theta along the line and another one is mg sin theta perpendicular to it i am going to resolve into two components one is mg cos theta along this line 
and another one is mg sin theta perpendicular to this. So now if I take the moment about point O, then what will be the equation? Minus of mg into sin theta into L. That is force into perpendicular distance. That is nothing but torque. So what is the torque? That is force into perpendicular distance. So what is the force? That is mg sin theta. mg cos theta I cannot consider because it is along the line. So mg sin theta and what is the perpendicular distance? The perpendicular distance is L. So what is the equation now? I into theta double dot is equal to minus mg L into sin theta. So our equation is I into theta double dot is equal to minus mg L into sin theta. For very small angle for very small angle for very small angle sin theta is equal to theta if I consider this angle as very small then what will happen then sin theta will be equal to theta then what will be the equation the equation will be I into theta double dot is equal to minus mg L into theta I have taken the right hand side that is restoring torque as negative because it will be acting in the opposite direction. If I give excitation in this direction then the restoring torque will be acting in the opposite direction. So that is the reason why I have considered this restoring torque as in terms of negative. So I know what is the value for I? I is m L square into theta double dot is equal to minus m g L into theta. So take this negative sign to this side, then it will become positive. So m L square L into theta double dot plus m g into L theta is equal to 0. So compare this equation with the standard form that is theta double dot plus omega n square into theta is equal to 0. So to convert that, what we need to do? We need to divide this equation by m L square. So what will be the remaining term? Theta double dot plus mg L theta divided by, sorry, mg L divided by m L square into theta is equal to 0. So m m gets cancelled. m and m gets cancelled. L and L square. So at the bottom we have L square and at the top you have L. So 1 L gets cancelled. So remaining term will be theta double dot plus g by l into theta is equal to 0. So now it is in the standard form of theta double dot plus omega n square into theta is equal to 0. So therefore omega n square is equal to g by l. So therefore omega n is equal to under root of g by l. So the natural frequency for a simple pendulum is given by under root of g by l. So that completes your first problem. So once again I will explain how we have to do it. The question is determine the natural frequency of a simple pendulum. That is the question. The figure is not given and it is not necessary that you have to draw the figure but it will be very clear if you draw the figure and then if you solve it. So for our clarification purpose, I have drawn the figure. So consider a simple pendulum. So simple pendulum is shown here. That is the initial phase. When I give an excitation to this pendulum, when I apply an external force on this pendulum, what will happen? It will come to this position. It will start oscillating about its mean point or the mean position. So how it will oscillate? It will come to this position. Then once again, it will come to this position. It will come to this position, it will come to this position after a certain interval of time, once again it will come back to its original position. So, what I have done is, I have considered that this is moved through an angle theta, this position, whatever it has got, it has moved through an angle theta and I have resolved this into two components. One is mg cos theta along the line and mg sin theta perpendicular to the line. This length is going to remain as same and it is L only. So for this particular system to remain in equilibrium, 
in the previous class we have understood that whatever the acceleration we have given that should whatever the acceleration is given is equal to the restoring one so whatever the accelerating torque i have given which is equal to the restoring torque which will be in opposite direction so if i give the excitation in this direction then the restoring torque will be acting in the opposite direction so accelerating torque is equal to restoring torque and in the case of torsional vibration we have seen that acceleration torque is given by i into theta double dot is equal to restoring torque take the moment about point o because torque is force into perpendicular distance so force is mg into sin theta and perpendicular distance is l so it becomes i into theta double dot is equal to minus mgl into sin theta for very small angle sin theta is equal to theta so it becomes i into theta double dot is equal to minus mgl theta and we know that the value for i is m into l square into theta double dot is equal to minus mgl theta so this minus mgl theta i am going to shift to other side it becomes positive so m l square theta double dot plus mgl into theta is equal to zero so compare this equation with the standard one that is theta double dot plus omega n square into theta is equal to zero so to bring this equation into this form divide this equation by m l square so you are going to get theta double dot plus mgl divided by m l square into theta is equal to zero this m and m gets cancelled l and l gets cancelled so remaining term is theta double dot plus g by l into theta is equal to zero so omega n square is equal to g by l so therefore omega n is given by under root of g by l so here we need to understand two things one is what is the restoring torque we have given and what is the rest uh, sorry what is the accelerating torque we need to understand first then we should understand what is the restoring torque so if you understand what is accelerating torque and what is restoring torque nothing is there in the problem so understanding of restoring torque and accelerating torque is very very important what is the external excitation and what is the reaction for that external excitation if you understand nothing is there in the problem all the problems are very easy only thing if you have understood or if you have the knowledge of what is the excitation and what is the its reaction for the given excitation so let us go for the next problem <coughs> determine the natural frequency of the system determine the natural frequency of the system shown below determine the natural frequency of the system shown below so here the system is given for this particular system what is the restoring uh, sorry what is the natural frequency we need to find out for this particular system what is the restoring torque first we should understand and then we can solve the given problem so that we can find out what is the natural frequency of the system so if i give the excitation to this mass first understand this is our original system for this system we need to find out what is the natural frequency if i give the excitation to this mass then what will happen so it will move in the direction of the applied force so that one i am going to show here so it will come back to its it will come to this position so it is moved through this position through an angle theta 
so what will happen to the spring it is going to expand the expansion of the spring is going to take place right so if i resolve this then after resolving after resolving what i am going to get so this is a sin theta and this is a sin theta in this direction and a cos theta in this direction or i can only show this much that is also sufficient this is mg cos theta and this is mg sin theta this length is l this length is l and the restoring force for a torque will be in this direction so it is k into a sin theta and this is a cos theta so when i give the excitation to this system the ball is going to move to this position and there will be expansion in the spring if the spring expands then its restoring force will be in opposite direction similarly if i give excitation to this ball it moves to this position but its restoring torque will be in opposite direction so here in the previous case there was only a ball that was a simple pendulum so now for this system i have attached one spring so it is very simple if i give the excitation to this ball so initially it is like this then it will move to new position like this if it moves to new position like this then for this particular length uh, we have attached a spring then there will be expansion in the spring in the direction in which the ball is going to move so if the spring moves in this direction then the restoring torque will be in this direction and when i give the excitation to ball it moves in this direction then the restoring torque will be in the opposite direction so it is a combination of spring plus a simple pendulum which we have done in the previous problem so for equilibrium of the system for equilibrium of the system for equilibrium of the system so what is the equation for equilibrium of the system accelerating torque accelerating torque is equal to restoring torque accelerating torque is equal to restoring torque so what is the accelerating torque so i am going to give acceleration or i am going to give the excitation only to the ball so it is i into theta double dot when i give excitation to this ball it moves in this direction so there will be a restoring torque from the ball so which is given by mg sin theta into l because if i take the moment about point o the torque is force into perpendicular distance the force is mg into sin theta perpendicular distance is l and it is acting in the opposite direction so i can take this as negative plus there will be a restoring torque from the spring also so what is that restoring torque it will be in opposite direction so i am going to write it as negative so what is the spring stiffness spring stiffness is k and the distance is a sin theta so it is minus k into a into sin theta minus k into a into sin theta so now simplify the equation so this is i into theta double dot is equal to minus mg l sin theta minus k a sin theta for very small angle for very small angle for very small angle sin theta is equal to theta for very small angle sin theta is equal to theta so wherever you have sin theta replace it with theta so 
so you are going to get i into theta double dot is equal to minus mg l theta minus k a theta so this is the remaining term so take the negative sign terms to the other side so that you get positive values so i into theta double dot is equal plus mg l theta plus k a theta is equal to zero so what is the value for i the value for i is m l square theta double dot plus m g l plus k <coughs> sorry this is a k a sin theta multiplied with perpendicular distance a k a sin theta perpendicular distance is a this perpendicular distance is given that is a so that becomes k a square theta so this becomes k a square theta mgl plus k a square i will take theta as common so now you have the equation in terms of m l square theta double dot plus m g l plus k a square into theta so therefore theta double dot plus m g l plus k a square divided by m l square into theta is equal to 0 dividing this equation by m l square so that we can reduce it to the standard form now comparing this equation with theta double dot plus omega n square into theta is equal to 0 so in terms of omega n square what is the value we have so omega n square is equal to m g l plus k a square divided by m l square so this implies omega n is equal to under root of m g l plus k a square divided by m into l square radian per second so this is the final equation for omega n that is natural frequency of a system is it clear so what is the system there is a system where the ball is attached at the end fixed at the other end and also a spring is attached to this system so when i give an excitation to this mass it moves in this direction if it moves in this direction then there will be a expansion in the spring because the spring is attached to this thread so if this thread moves then the spring also moves then there will be a restoring torque from the spring in this direction and when i give excitation to this ball it moves in this direction and there will be a restoring torque from the ball in the same direction and if i resolve and i am going to get the restoring torque as mg sin theta multiplied with l into ka sin theta multiplied with perpendicular distance a so mg l sin theta minus k square sin theta if sin theta for very small angle sin theta is equal to theta so i am going to get i into theta double dot minus mg into l theta minus k into a square into theta so taking negative terms to this side so i am going to get the value of omega n as mgl plus k a square divided by m into l square radian per second so this is the fourth problem for today's class so next discuss the little bit change in the problem the same problem if we solve it by different or if we replace the system then what will happen how the equation is going to change let us see once again the problem statement is same find the natural frequency or determine the natural frequency of the system shown in the below figure the figure is given as below
so what i have done is i have just interchanged the mass in the previous problem the fixed point was here and the mass was below right what i have done is in this problem is i have taken the mass to the upper side and the lower side is fixed now how the value of the natural frequency is going to change can you guess so when the mass is at the bottom and the upper end is fixed we got the natural frequency as mgl plus k a square divided by m into l square radian per second if i interchange the position of the mass the spring is going to remain at the same position if i interchange the mass then what is going to happen to the natural frequency so for that we need to understand first what are the restoring torques and in which direction it is going to act if i give the excitation to this mass in this direction if i give the excitation to the mass in this direction then what will be the free body diagram and how it is going to look first we need to understand so this is fixed this point is fixed so this is the original line on which the mass is placed and if i give the excitation to this mass and it will move in this direction right it is going to move in that direction if it moves in that direction then there will be expansion in the spring right then there will be expansion in the spring right so this length is going to remain same that length is going to remain l only there will be no change in the length and this distance is going to remain same that is a only that is a only so how to resolve the points or how to resolve it this is point o so how it is going to act so once again we you need to resolve the points one is ka sin theta one is ka cos theta one is mg cos theta and another one is mg sin theta so i am going to re resolve into two components one is mg cos theta and another one is perpendicular to it that is mg sin theta one is mg cos theta and another one is mg sin theta one is ka sin theta and one is ka cos theta for this spring also one is ka sin theta and one another one you can replace it as ka cos theta so therefore for equilibrium for equilibrium of the system for equilibrium of the system we know that accelerating torque we know that accelerating torque is equal to restoring torque accelerating torque is equal to restoring torque so what is the accelerating torque the accelerating torque is i into theta double dot which we have given to the mass what is the restoring torque the restoring torque will be in opposite direction then it is mg into sin theta into perpendicular distance is l minus because it is also in opposite direction ka sin theta into perpendicular distance is a ka sin theta into perpendicular distance is a so this will be i into theta double dot is equal to minus mg l sin theta minus a a square sin theta minus k a square sin theta <coughs> so mg l sin theta so what will be the direction for mgl sin theta the mgl sin theta will be positive the mgl sin theta will be positive it will not be negative it will be positive but k a square sin theta is negative so <coughs> i into theta double dot is equal to mg l into theta minus k a square into theta k a square into 
theta so <coughs> take all the terms to one side so the remaining will be i is replaced with m l square m l square into theta double dot minus m g l theta plus k a square theta is equal to zero so i have taken to the other side so sorry this becomes negative and this becomes positive so m l square into theta double dot plus k a square into theta minus m g l into theta is equal to zero so replace this one in terms of theta double dot plus omega n square into theta is equal to zero replace that one theta double dot plus omega n square into theta you have to reduce ml square theta double dot minus mgl theta plus k square theta in terms of theta double dot plus omega n square into theta is equal to zero so if you reduce in that form you are going to get the value of omega n so what will be the value of omega n the value of omega n is for other system we have got that is the mgl plus k square by ml square radian per second but for this one you are going to get under root of k a square minus mgl divided by sorry k into a square k a square minus mgl sorry it is m into l square m into l square so that will be in terms of radian per second that will be in terms of radian per second is it clear if you just reverse the system then how it is going to change so that one we have discussed in this problem in the next problem i am going to solve another two, two to three problems so with that we are going to conclude the problems on finding out of natural frequency and we'll start with the derivation of <coughs> equation of motion we'll in the next class we'll start with the new concept that is a differential equation for damped free vibration systems in the next class we are going to discuss that thank you